All right. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's doing good today. So, yes, I will be taking a look at the Insomniac Museum soon. Um, but we have a couple of, uh, a couple of weapons left to upgrade. Hold on one second. Okay. I think everything's good to go now. Forgetting, I can I can skip getting bolt bolt cases. Dude, it's almost surreal that I'm using, like, top-tier weapons now. Oops. Ouch. It's actually, in, in my opinion, it's actually not that great, uh, great when you first get it, but when you level it up, it's like god tier. I probably could have killed him. Oh well. Huh, <laughs> we're at the end already.
Um, I think you, I think in the first playthrough you can only level them up to level 10, and then in, and then when you do the challenge mode, then you can level each weapon up to level 100. But if I remember that correctly, it actually doesn't take that as long as you would think. But yeah, I, I did do that. Yeah, it's so fast you wonder why they even did it that way. It's like you might as well have just only done 10 levels and have it to actually take a, a certain amount of time. Oh, that's not nice. I don't do speed runs. Oop. I will just do I am just a casual casual uh, gamer. Huh, that's interesting. Oops. You have to you have to be really dedicated to speedrunning. Oop, that's not right. Uh speedrun a game and I'm I'm not there. <laughs>
Ah, damn it. That's probably too low. Oh no, it's fine. I know, it's so hard. I, I'm like trying to... I'm trying to fight the urge. Like, if it's, if it's along the path, sure. Like, you know, these guys are gonna get it, but like... The ones out of my way are the ones that I'm supposed to, like, avoid. That might be too low. Oh no, we're fine. Oops, a little bit closer. Dang it, get closer. Perhaps these robots. Alright, well, we're done with that planet. <laughs> we're 12 minutes into the recording. I will break the snow dan though. Snow dan. Almost walked off. So what's my stream like for you? Are you having like buffering issues?
You don't see problems? Okay, I guess it's just on my end. All right, you know what? I'll take it. Actually, figured one of them would hit. There we go. Oh, hello. Ah, uh, you're gonna do that to me? Lame. screw around. We're just gonna go in here and tear shit up and move on. I win. So I probably only need to fire one of these all level up. Sure enough. <laughs> So this one could be kind of a pain, but we'll see. You know, what, let's go ahead and use my let's just use my shield for these guys. So I was thinking myself earlier, uh, right before I started the stream, that I bet I that I bet I could get the the two weapons upgraded by at by like the end of the testing facility. So we'll see if that whole if that prediction is good. We might have to go to the next the next planet after that.
I mean, at least the paint job's intact, right? Have a good meal.
All right, on to the testing facility. So with luck, I will upgrade this by the end of this planet. Hey, see if you can find there he's wearing two watching. helmets. Welcome back. Actually, you know what? I don't think it's going to be that. Unfortunately, I think we're going to have to go to Java. I'm surprised you hit me. Uh, you know what? I don't know. It's going to be really close. We can, we can get it. Good 
God, should I even do this? Oh, it forces me to. Okay. Oops. Helicopters need to go away. Ooh, that was actually kind of close. It would have been fine if I just turned around and killed those helicopters. What I could do is I could actually, uh, if I don't make it, I could actually come back here with I don't think that actually killed anybody, but oh well.
Oh, we're almost there. Since I've never used it. So that's all it is, is it just a, it just it just kills whatever on whatever is on screen, which is super powerful, but I only get four shots of the damn thing. So what I'll do is I'll do this section. I'll actually go to the next planet, but once we get to the... We're not going to go to the, the disposal facility. Um, okay. We're going to go to Jabba. But once we get to Jabba, we're going to immediately go to Insomniac Museum and check it out. Because, yeah, let's take a look. Oh, I can't take a look right now. So yeah, yep, everything's everything is leveled up as much as it can be. Um Hey, you just came you came back just in time because I just finished leveling up the final weapon. So we're gonna go check out Insomniac Museum here in a second. So we're going to go to Jabba, but we're not going to do anything there. As soon as we land, we're going to go to Insomniac. That's for land. Yep, it's saved. Hold on, let me look here. Beach Boy. Ah, oh, sweet. Let's get let's let's get up on that action. Yeah. Ratchet shows his funny side. Ah, oh, cool. I should have done one of these. Oops. I know this one. 
Okay. Let's this. Okay. And shortcuts. Insomniac Museum. It's Planet Planet Burbank. <laughs> This is Mike Stout. I'm a designer at Insomniac Games. Hi, welcome to the Insomniac Museum. Here you'll see some of the great things that never quite made it into the game, and you'll learn a little bit about life here at Insomniac Games. Circa 2003. Hello, my name is Brian Allgaier, the design director at Insomniac Games. These floating spherical monstrosities are the elusive gravity spheres, which were originally going to be included in Silver City. They proved to be too difficult, and a bit nauseating, to be included. They are preserved here for posterity. Swing shot up to try running around one, and then swing shot again to get off the sphere. Don't mind if I do. Oops. That's interesting. Oh, I don't have the gravity boots. Damn it. That's fine. I guess we'll move on then. Hi there, my name's Tim Trespass. I'm a gameplay programmer here at Insomniac Games. I'm a Leo from Washington, DC. I like anime and shiny objects. This car was originally going to be included in the battle with the giant robot on Snivlack. Unfortunately, its lack of heavy weaponry proved its bane. It now calls the Insomniac Museum its home. You know what I'm gonna do real quick? Because the music's kind of loud. If I can, yeah, let's turn let's turn the music down even further. Hey, it's Tim. This car. Yeah, okay. He. Oh, I can't fire it or anything. This is Oliver Wade, the animation director here at Insomniac Games. The Three-Headed Hydra was a big cut from Ratchet and Clank 1. It was originally intended as a mini-boss on Pokitaru. Ratchet battled this beast whilst riding a boat through blowfish-infested waters. However, it didn't end up being that much fun at all. My name is Chris Town, and I'm a tester here at Insomniac Games. Here at Insomniac, we're so hopped up on caffeine that we bounce off the walls. You can do the same with these gravity ramps. I mean, I could if I had the gravity boots. Oh, no map available? Come on. Mike Stout here. Have you ever wanted to create your own infiltrator puzzle? Well, now you can. Just stand on the blue pad and play around with the values a bit. Confound your friends and amaze your enemies. What blue pad? What do you mean by that, uh, Lido?
<laughs> oh, this one has weapons. Ooh, this looks cool. Hello, I'm Carl Grande, the QA manager here at Insomnia Games. This gadget was originally intended for Ratchet and Clank 1. Unfortunately, it didn't make the cut, and so never saw the light of day. It now makes its home here at Insomniac Museum, gone but not forgotten. Oh, yeah. Yelled into the mic, like I occasionally do. I think some of these messages are in the wrong place, but maybe I'm just... That's just me. Chris here. This helmet was the original model for the Hollow Guys gadget in Ratchet and Clank 1. It was eventually changed to the handheld model you see in the finished game for reasons unknown. However, we once again suspect it was due to the squirrels with hacksaws. <laughs> Have an interesting, interesting sense of humor. Insomniac Games does. So I actually forgot the the large amount of stuff that they uh, they have in this place that was actually from Ratchet and Clank One. Oh boy, this is going to be a treat. I don't think this really even unlocks anything. But I'm up for the challenge. Oops. Fuck. Damn it. <laughs> Is there anything hidden on the walls? I didn't think there was. Oh, I know what that is. I'll be with you in a second. Okay. Hello, this is Pedro Hastinas. I am a gameplay programmer at Insomniac Games. These teleporters were originally intended to go into several of the levels. Due to time constraints, however, they were eventually cut. Hmm. <laughs> Brian Allgaier here. These escalating rows of blocks were used when we were in the early stages of creating Ratchet and Clank 1. They were used to test Ratchet's jump heights and jump distances to see which would be the most fun. Oh, I see. I need to go up this way. That's four meters, three meters, two meters. So, uh, Ratchet's got some ups then. Four meters he can get to. Oops. So is this one? This one's nine meters? Let's try the 11 meter one. Oh, it is about Ratchet and Clank 1, or... Okay. I think there's some stuff that that's, was cut from Going Commando in here, but we'll see. Brian Allgaier here. These ramps get steeper and steeper as you go on. 
They were used to test how Ratchet's feet respond to different floor angles. It also helped establish that a 45 degree angle was the sharpest that Ratchet should be able to walk up. I can get up with it. You can get up the 50 degree angle though. Brian Allgaier here. These walls, which range from narrow to wide, were used to test wall kick distances for the original Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, go ahead. There's absolutely no purpose to be up here. Oops. That's right. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to waste my time with that though. This is cool. This was created to test screen buffer effects. Screen buffer effects are used to create things like distortion bubbles and heat hazing. This, however, ends up looking like a hall of mirrors. Can you guess why? I don't, I don't, like, even though I do want to check out this place, I also want to, at some point, move on to up your arsenal. So. Oh, man. Oh, this, is, this does not handle at all. Maybe this is where the car physics in Jack 2 came from. This dummy was created to test the new reaction system, which we added to Ratchet and Clank 2. With this system, enemies would always be sure to react appropriately to being damaged without a ton of hassle. Go ahead and hit him. He won't mind. Yeah, but it's still interesting, though. My name is Corey Stockton, and I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. You may recognize this drill from Ratchet and Clank 1. It was held by a large construction worker who gives you a lump of veritanium. This is originally yeah, fuck the car the physics in Jack 2. That's, that's kind of the main reason why... That's kind of the main reason why I'm just, like, super, like, anxious to... Or... Not at all thrilled about playing that game. I, I still have to mull it over and think about it. Corey here. You may recognize this drill from Ratchet and Clank 1. 
It was held by a large construction worker who gives you a lump of rarity. I do remember that. This is originally a weapon called the revolver. Oh. Ratchet would strike enemies with it and then spin them over his head. Oh, there's more text there. Corey here. You may recognize it this uh, has it Unfortunately, this ended up leaving Ratchet open for attack and also required a lot of resources to pull off, so it was cut. Okay. Hey, it's Tim. This monstrosity was intended to be a boss battle fought on the jet ski gadget. Seeing as the jet ski never made it in Ratchet and Clank, however, neither did this boss. May he rest in pieces. Wait, what was this from? Hey, it's Tim. Fought in the water. This monstrosity was intended to be a boss battle. Oh no, there was a couple of going commando stuff. It was the the spheres. Hi, my name is Sean Whistler, and I'm a tester here at Insomniac Games. This guy was originally intended to be an enemy in the ill-fated jet ski level that never made it into Ratchet and Clank 1. A moment of silence, please, for this gentle giant, torn down in his prime. Because they said that, um... Those those uh, spheres that were cut were meant for Silver City, which is a Bolden. And there was also that. Ooh, this, oh, I, I remember this one. Hi, I'm Leslie Matheson. I'm a designer here at Insomniac Games. This was intended to be the water system for Ratchet and Clank. However, as even this little patch of water taxes the game engine to its limits, a modified and severely optimized form was what eventually made it into the game. To see this patch in action, press circle. Yeah, that's like... Huh. And then there was also that vehicle that I drove around as soon as I got here. They said that was meant that was originally meant for the boss battle in Snivlack. Where is it? This guy. Hey, it's Tim. This car was originally going to be included in the battle with the giant robot on Snivlack. Yeah. So I think all we have to have left to look at are these like center rooms here. Sean here. Don't worry, Ratchet. You wouldn't have had to fight this monster even if he did make it into the game. This giant bug ship was intended to act as scenery only, flying from place to place to ensure high detail on buildings while leaving the play area open. Oh. Sean here. Play area worry, open Ratchet. for you to you run around and fight, fight the giant robot. Alas, it was cut from doing. This giant bug ship was intended to act as scenery only. Hmm. I know, I'd say like right now the it's like 90% Ratchet and Clank 1 and 10% going Commando. I think this can actually hurt me. Maybe I'm wrong. Hi, my name is Tony Garcia and I'm a programmer at Insomniac Games. This wonder of an explosion was created especially for Ratchet and Clank 2. Its extreme versatility allowed it to creep into many different places in the game. You'll even see it in the electrolyzer puzzles. Stand on the blue pad to make your own explosions. Big. Number of moon rocks. Uh, let's turn everything up to uh, as high as it'll go. Let's break this game. Well, this is the color. Shake camera? Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. What shell? There we go. Tony Garcia here. This little demonstration allows you to create your own shot effect. Using the magic of debug technology, you can edit the shot's size and color, and then watch the bandit shoot it at the block man. Don't feel too sorry for the block man, though. He's evil. Yee. These are just the colors, huh?
Don't mind me, I'm just gonna max everything out. Oh, holy shit. I'm assuming this might actually be able to go up to... Go up to... 100. We'll go the other way, see what happens. Oh, uh, nope. And that's super green. <laughs> that goes right over me. Garcia here. Using these three blue pads, you can edit the three particle effects in the center of the room. Go ahead, play around with them. You can achieve some truly great effects this way. I'd be more willing to play with this if they gave me another option to enter in values than other than just the D-pad. That almost looks like Megacorp in the distance. Was I here? I don't think so. Corey here. This monstrous robotics squid was created for one of the Ratchet and Clank 2 prototype levels. Since that level never made it into the finished game, however, neither did poor Squiddy. That might be it. I thought Chainblade was in here. Maybe he's actually in Ratchet and Clank 3. Oh, here we go. Missed one. Greetings. This is Oliver Wade, the animation director at Insomniac Games, doing an atrocious British accent. This is the original Gadgetron vendor from Ratchet and Clank 1. The official reason it was cut had something to do with saving memory. The real reason has a lot to do with squirrels, hacksaws, and our lawyers. I can say no more because I am no longer able to do this accent. Yeah, I kind of remember that too.
That was the water. I think we're, I think that's it then. Okay, well, uh, well, first off, I'm gonna go over to the infiltrator here. Yeah, there's no, they must, did they forget to put a blue pad in? Because there's no blue pad. Oh, I don't have an, that, you know what the issue is? I don't have an infiltrator. That's the issue. <laughs> Whoops. So there you go. If you want to get, if you want to get the full, the full experience of the Insomniac Museum, actually get the gravity boots and infiltrator first. My bad. But, uh, neat little thing, this place. Especially with the particle effects and stuff like that. It's just like, I wish there was a way to, I wish there was a way to enter in values other than just the D-pad. But this was the PlayStation 2 era. So, thinking, like, bringing up a, like, a little keyboard didn't really pop in anyone's mind at the time. Okay, well, yep, I think that's it. So let's, uh... Let's get out of here, and I will actually be... Um... I'll, I'll be starting, uh... Listen up, thugs for less. We got a big job ahead, so pay attention. Uh, Megacorp has hired us to protect their CEO, Mr. Fizzwood. Oh, that's interesting. Um, usually that cutscene doesn't play until after you... get... Af until after you get the testing facility done. Whoa! So I just skipped to Bolden. <laughs> I didn't know that would happen. I skipped to Bolden. Did everything else unlock? Yeah, I skipped. <laughs> That's really cool. Apparently, if you use the shortcut and then leave via the ship, you go to Bolden. So I skipped to Dono. That's really funny. I didn't know you could do that. It, I think it'd be imp it'd be impossible for you to beat the game, but still, it's funny. Because, I think, yeah, there's a couple of infiltrator puzzles you need to do. That's really fucking funny. Okay. Cool. So, stream, stick around. Uh, I'm not done streaming. I'm just going to switch games. Uh, YouTube, thanks for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitch and on Twitter. Also, sub uh, subscribe me. I upload my past streams there. And this one, this one will go up as soon as possible. It's, it's only an hour long, so that won't take long. Um, and uh, links down below to, to get you where you need to be. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.